You're listening to Me and Paranormal You with your host, Ryan Singer. It's more fun to believe. Third, third year, year bonus. bonus. Here we go. We're off and running. Have you ever talked into a microphone for an hour by yourself and then realized that the input device was not recording? And when you go to export, you realize there is nothing there. And then you have this moment of like, oh, my God, I was really on one when I recorded that. How is that not going to go out into the world. It was a moment in time that was magical, probably, frankly, the best Mindcast episode I've ever recorded. And now it is gone. There is nothing to do except mourn its passing. Oh, my God, can you believe it? So what do you do? Do you sit and cry? Do you break a microwave? Do you shatter old high school yearbooks? No, you don't do any of that. I didn't. I, I did not do any of that. I'm not really that kind of guy. Or do you just quickly delete the blank ghost file and hit record, and then start telling everybody how you recorded, but it didn't record? That's where we're at. Welcome to the program. My name is Ryan Singer. We're going to talk about synchro mysticism today, and I'm just going to. I don't know, maybe remember everything I just said. I will say this. In that last episode, a few different times I yelled out loud, am I on one right now? Because I was kind of on one. And I honestly, I don't even remember what I was on one about. I, I th- This is the nature of this extemporaneous freestyling of a 30-year bonus where I may pause for a few seconds for the commercials to come in because I'm now on speaker a uh, Spreaker Prime podcasting but so they got you know mid rolls now and there's commercials I hope uh, I hope you're okay with the commercials uh, you know if you're not I apologize but you know we got to try to I'm not even trying to keep the lights on I'm trying to get the lights turned on over here okay you know what I said try to turn the lights on over here okay so uh what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna you know re-record everything Synchro mysticism, I, you know, can I just give you a summation of everything I talked about previously that you didn't hear? It's, for me, it's it's portmanteau, which is great, which is a great word. It's one word, portmanteau. And it's a combination of two words. Synchronicity and mysticism. Mysticism is like, oh, you become one with the universe, the absolute, the God, right? And synchronicity is like you find meaning in coincidences that the universe is speaking to you. So you combine those two things. Now you're at one with the universal synchronicity, right? And the, 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 the messaging of God through synchronicity, you are at one with it, right? And, and you know, I'm, I'm kind of, that's just a general idea, right? And, but at the end of the day, the end of the day, what it is, in my opinion, drum roll plays, it's a language, right? So, the languages of the universe, this is what we're talking about. Isn't this what we're talking about this whole fucking time, man? Eight years we've been talking about, whether I realized it or not, we've been talking about the languages of the universe. Which language do you speak? Are you speaking mysticism? Are you speaking synchronicity? Are you speaking paranormal investigation? Are you speaking orthodox religion? What are these languages, right? And languages are tools. And here's the beautiful thing about mysticism and synchro mysticism, man. Hat tip to animism. Oh, top three all-time belief system, right? Animism. I mean, are you on board with animism? Or are you totally on board with animism? I think those are really the only two. I, you know, this idea that objects, animals, places, things, uh, you know, constructed things, words are, you know, alive and animated, right? That, that, that there's, there's essence inside of everything. Thing rocks and straws and sunglasses made of skateboards, televisions that are plasma, fingernails 
that have long been discarded and kept in a jar for a love spell. Do you do that? I, I, I'm going to ask that you don't if you do. Anyway, you do you. I'm not here to judge you. Uh, I just, not a fan of nails. Clipped, clipped nails, I should say. Nah, they kind of get an icky, icky, icky feeling when I think about the nails. Okay. Moving on. I'm not going to say I haven't jerked off into the jar and put in some fingernails and things like that or try to manifest you know, a television show or something. Oh, what? Who who was that who just came out? I'm not going to say I didn't, uh, you know, you know, bleed into a cup and then, uh, you know, try to, you know, take some of my own hair and then try to manifest, you know, a, uh, you know, a piece of party when I was 17 years old. Wait, what? You're not going to say... So let me guess. When you say you're not going to say it, blah, blah, you're just it's saying exactly what you did. I'm not going to say that that's true or not. Okay, this is a new person showing up on the program. Anyway, you do your magic the way you want to do it. I ain't here to judge you on that. Potentially, animism perceives all things. I mean, this is, I mean, you know, that's what we're talking about here, right? Everything is alive. Like, what are we even doing here if we don't understand that everything is a lie, right? That's why Pet Rocks, you know, I'm going to have a Pet Rock, Pet Rock Rescue, a <laughs> Pet Rock Rescue. I'm going to start a Pet Rock Rescue. You know what I mean? They've just been discarded. It's just sad. Um. So, hat tip to animism, right? I mean, there's uh, also known as disambiguation. Uh, animism is kind of, you know, is related to synchro mysticism in in certain ways. And then you start, you know, some of the some of the old familiars, you know, you know, chaos magic, some other things. The point is, my buddy Mario Creston sends me down this rabbit hole about synchro mysticism. And then it occurs to me that like, oh, this is a language, right? This is a interpretation system for the magic of the universe. And so I'm thinking, okay, well, there's also theosophy. There's, you know, the philo philosophical research society. There's philosophy. There's theology. There is paranormal there is synchronicity, there's mysticism, there's esotericism, there's hermeticism, there's masonry. I mean, there's so much, so much, so much, so much. And I'm an idealist. Top three all-time belief system. Idealism, animism. Number three, TBD. I mean, I shook my head from side to side so emphatically when I did T B D like a almost like a a seesaw, a teeter totter. Another thing. <laughs> I guess I'm still on one. I mean I'm on one over here. I don't know if you are. And it's okay if you're not. I guess it's my job to be on one because I'm providing the content for your entertainment. Education? No, entertainment. Are you education? No, entertainment. Education. Yeah. Get illuminated. Okay, so <laughs> I've got this idea that is just screaming inside of my tongue to let you know about. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you a hint about it, and I'll, I'll talk about it again later. But I'm really excited about it. I came up with it about an hour and ten minutes ago. And that's me, I guess. That's me. I don't uh, sit on ideas for too long. I just kind of, I blurt them out. And then whether I do them or not, who knows? That's, that's not for me to decide. <laughs> that's not for me to decide if I do something. It's to the fates, my friend. So I love this idea that there's these languages, there's uh, these belief systems, essentially, rightfully or wrongfully, I'm calling all these different belief systems. Belief, I can't speak. These belief systems. I slid a sheet and sit on it and run out of shit. Okay, that's an old, that's an old thing that theater kids know what I'm talking about. So these belief systems, I believe, are languages, right? So we have the languages of the universe. And 
as an idealist, consciousness is the foundation, the wellspring of all things. Everything else sprouts from which that is, which is unexplainable and un, undefinable still at this time. Although, you know, if I sat down, give me, give me an hour, I bet I could define consciousness. <laughs> the guy who's like, eh, I could do it. Uh, give me a pen. Um, so, oh, the things I feel. Okay, that's not going to work as a definition of conscious. Okay, the things I think and feel about. Okay, that's actually not too far away, probably. But okay, no. Uh, give me a, give me another pen. No, <laughs> why do you need another pen? You need another piece of paper, not another pen. The pen. Wor- what are what's happening? Okay. All these belief systems are languages. As an idealist, I believe the consciousness is the foundation of all of this, which everything else springs forth, right? So all these belief systems are like different languages. And it reminds me of like how people care about where they're from. And it's like, why do we give a shit about where any of us are from, right? It, it just, maybe I'm of a certain age where I'm just like, why does, it, who gives a sh- who cares? Boring. I grew up. I actually, I grew up in Southern Ohio. It is pretty interesting. And blah blah blah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just immediately after I said boring. Oh, actually, it's interesting. I grew up in uh, Southern Ohio. So what you have here are these different languages trying to explain the thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Essentially, bear with me of the universe and of existence itself. Right. So why does it matter where we're from? Well, because generally speaking, depending on where you're from, it will have dictated what language you speak and how you speak that language, which might not seem like a big deal. But over here in this house, we're big fans of the movie Arrival. Why? Because language is the heart of that movie. And how one speaks directly relates to how one thinks. So, words are alive. I mean, this is why animism is so great. Words are animated and alive. Some of them are much more alive than others. There are some words that have turned into real beasts, right? Uh, Beasts of the open wild. Is that a thing? Beasts of the open range. Beasts of the range wild open. Now that's a movie I'd watch. This summer, beasts of the range wild open. Not wide, wild. Wild, not wide, wild. Beasts of the Range Wild Open, starring beasts. Okay, we get it. And a range. Did you enjoy the... Sorry, I was sick, by the way. I didn't even tell you why I missed a week and a half. I was down for the count. Gnarly sinus infection. Sleeping 12 hours a day. Just feeling like poo-poo. Okay, feeling better now antibiotics came in and showed up and they shut everybody up about the mucus they saw. Antibiotics are the men in black of the pharmaceutical world. Can we agree on that? Going around, shutting up witnesses, making them disappear, making threats. The men in black of the pharmaceutical world, antibiotics. And I'm glad they showed up, quite frankly. Thank you, men in black, for getting rid of those sinus discs that kept flying out of my mouth. Like a, like the deep ocean, uh, alien bases. Okay, so anyway, I was sick, missed a week and a half. Hope you weren't worried. I got this idea about going, I'm going to do an on location kind of for three or four weeks. I'm all over the place because I haven't talked to you in like two weeks. Okay, so <laughs> settle the fucking down. <laughs> Thank God I'm home alone right now. Or... I anyway, so what we have here is the languages of the universe. Can we get, can we get on track here? Mario, you sent me down a fucking rabbit hole that is 
you know, spun me out, my friend. You've spun me out. So what we have is, is that my real voice? This is probably my real voice. I don't know. It's a little deeper when I record. I don't know. So the point is, I believe that these are all different languages, right? And much as in the way that thoughts, feelings, and emotions are all spoken with different languages by the human creature, depending on where we were born and also how we speak them, which speaks to intent oftentimes, and it also changes the levels of effectiveness when it comes to communicating with other people. Can you understand these thoughts, feelings, emotions, this information that I'm passing from me to you? Is it palatable? Can you understand it? Does it make sense? And we do know that one of the most frustrating things in the world is when someone doesn't understand what we're trying to say to them. And we, you know, I think by the fourth or fifth time you really try to explain it to them and they still don't get it, that's when blind murderous rage sets in. No, I'm just kidding. It doesn't go, hopefully it doesn't go that far um, for you. I've, <laughs> I'm sure it has actually in real life and that's, you know, maybe it's not as funny as I initially thought. So apologies, but it is aggravating. It is frustrating when something we are trying to convey is un understandable. Is, can you do that, man? I'm on one. It doesn't matter. Okay. So. It's ununderstandable. <laughs> okay. We're just going to go with that. That's a word. It's ununderstandable by another person when we're trying to convey information. And that is aggravating and it's frustrating. And therefore, does the universe ever find itself frustrated or aggravated when we are not understanding the information it's trying to convey to us? And I would guess that maybe not. The universe doesn't become frustrated. But then on the other hand, to play devil's advocate here, and Bo, oh, she's got a great ass. He is right up in it. Uh, Al Pacino. Great job in that movie starring him and Keanu Reeves. I would argue that maybe that the universe could show signs of frustration and or aggravation about its message not being received by sending it over and over and over and over again, maybe in two different forms until we get it. We've heard the phrase about like, ah, oh, you know, I got to, yeah, you know, it just kept happening until I learned my lesson. Well, maybe that's the universe trying to communicate. And if you would have learned the lesson the first time, maybe it wouldn't have been so. The universe wouldn't have had to have been so frustrated in the way it delivered its message. This was not in the first one I recorded, so I'm glad this happened because this is, I dare not call it an insight, but this is an idea that I find interesting uh, nonetheless, even though I'll totally forget it in an hour from now because these are all extemporaneous and, you know, I don't, I just kind of talk for an hour straight and you probably know that already. Uh, that's why there's seven people who listen to this podcast anymore, by the way. No. <laughs> That's a little late night Conan O'Brien trick. Uh, act like nobody listens, but you still do it. Why, why are you still doing it then? Okay, because these seven people need to know. It's my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, my cousin, my nephew. Okay. I'm on one. So I'm going to have to take a drink here. Let's pause uh, so I can turn the lights back on. And we're back. So Spreaker Prime podcasting, I, you know, I got these ads now. I hope you don't mind them. You know, I got to turn the lights on, you know, let alone keep them on. I got to get them turned on, you know, you know what I mean? This one is definitely recording though, because I can see the little word, the word lines bouncing up and down when I do it. That should have been a red flag the first time. So you go down this rabbit hole a little bit, right? You start thinking about synchro mysticism. It gets you into animism. I mean, animism is is really it's really badass and you know you know when you start thinking about water gods and you know plant animal like gods things like that now you're talking animism right you're you're getting into this you're getting into the animism um and one of my favorite favorite books of all time written by Daniel Quinn who considers themselves an animal an anim an animal an animist um why am i not telling you the name of the book you don't know the name of the book by daniel quinn you know this name of the you know the name of the book you know the name of the book don't you 
Think about it. Just think about it for a second. Ishmael, that's the name of the book. Okay, I gave you a second to think about it, and you got it. I know you got it before I told you. Ishmael, one of my favorite books of all time, one of the most profound experiences I've ever had, just picking up a book off the bottom shelf at a library, being overwhelmed with emotion and energy from who I would guess all the other people who have read this book previously have imbued this book with so much just emotion and like love because of the profound changes it can affect in people. I'm going to read that book again because it's so freaking good. It's a good book, and you got your head right up in it. Thank you. That was uh, Al Al Riccino. He likes to read. Al Pacino likes to... uh, If Al Pacino liked to read uh, spirituality books, he'd be Al Riccino. Okay. That was really stretching on that one. So, I I mean, I'm an idealist. I'm an animist, I suppose, to a certain degree. I mean, I don't know. I think when you start thinking about the languages of the universe, right, and the paranormal, I believe, is just another language of the universe. And if consciousness is the foundation and we're using all these different ways to try to interpret what the universe is saying to us through these different languages, we're having all these same experiences and we're using all these different words and all these different, um, I was going to say prototypes, but that's not, correct in any way for what we're talking about here these modalities right of trying to interpret what the universe is saying to us and that's where i had this idea that these different languages right if if we talk about a unified paranormal theory which For me, it's pretty simple. Consciousness. So if we if we think about a unified paranormal theory and we just think about consciousness, right? Daniel Quinn is no longer alive, unfortunately. He died in twenty eighteen and it makes me fucking sad. He was eighty two years old. Anyway, so you think about a unified paranormal theory, and in a way, what happens is you have, you know, let's say you have a philosopher's stone something that can translate any language into any other language. That's a very powerful tool. And we are that way almost with human spoken languages. There are certain human languages that are still not translatable to other languages. Uh, and and by that, I, I, I think I, I just mean like, you know, there's, it's not widespread, right? It's not easily, you can't just go to your Barnes and Noble and buy like, oh, let's find a Sumerian to English dictionary. I'm going to go read some uh, hieroglyphs. That's just not going to happen. But you can go to school for 20 years and then maybe still not know what the fuck you're talking about. I I don't know. I'm not a word scientist. (laughs) I did get a degree in writing. Uh, So I guess that's words. But I believe a unified paranormal theory stems from this idea that all of it is a language, right? And the way we are, it's a communication, if nothing, a transmission. Maybe that'll that'll make it a little simpler to understand in my own brain. It's a transmission. And we're using all of these different languages to interpret this transmission synchronicity is an interpretation of transmission mysticism is an interpretation of this transmission paranormal theory is an interpretation of the universe's transmissions science theology philosophy etc these are all interpretations of the transmission. Once we understand that, people smarter than me will be able to understand, well, oh yeah, that's why there's so many similarities. That's why there's so many synchronicities. 
when examining all these different languages and you're examining all these different stories throughout history that have so many things that keep popping like, oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's interesting that that's here. And that's also here. These people didn't know each other at this time. So how could they be telling the exact same story practically? if They didn't know each other around the exact same time. It's because the universe was sending transmissions. Different people with different languages and different ideas, different languages and different belief systems, different languages were interpreting these transmissions. And the transmissions at times, I would argue, are so fucking clear that there's not a lot of room for interpretation of this transmission, right? Everybody's going to be pretty close to the same thing because there's not a lot of wiggle room about what the fuck just happened. Does that make sense? Good. Okay, good night. <laughs> I kid. I jest. I joke. So, synchro mysticism. This is an interesting language. And as you know, I love the language of idealism. I love the language of animism. I love synchro mysticism as well. At times, we can be. I was going to say overpowered and then I was going to say overwhelmed. And then I was just thinking that neither one of those are correct. Neither one of those are correct. It doesn't matter. Really? You can say neither nor. Neither nor. Neither nor. Why do you sound like a cat when you do neither nor? Okay. Uh, I, I I really did. I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> that cat question by whoever just asked it or who was ever doing that uh, really threw me. Uh, I just kind of hit the reset button in my brain. It doesn't really matter, right, uh, where we're from. Can, am I bringing this all back? Almost as if I planned it, which I fucking didn't. Okay, don't go... Don't go getting these crazy ideas in yet that I was planning on bringing this all the way back full circle. I was a not. I was a not. It doesn't really matter where we're from. It doesn't matter what language we were taught. It doesn't matter how we speak that language. The transmissions of the universe oftentimes Maybe when they're really important, I don't know what the connotation here is, but maybe when they're very, very important, there's little wiggle room in the interpretation of these transmissions. Are we headed for a major transmission soon? And are we already receiving it? In the last 50 years, we've been receiving many, many transmissions through many different languages, whether it's through channelers, whether it's through alien contactees, whether it's through psychics or mystics of other kinds, of source or whatever else, um, telling us that we're, we're destroying our, ourselves. This seems to be a similar message from so many different sources, so many different languages, right? As I'm using this word here tonight, this morning, today. That we need to love each other. We need to stop destroying the planet. And we need to stop warring. We need to reprioritize. This seems to be pretty constant very consistent, little wiggle room in interpretation of this transmission throughout all kinds of languages. Maybe that's where we are now. Maybe that's exactly where we are. And... 
maybe we are past. We've got some time to figure this out. And maybe this live Senate hearing about UFOs that's going to be next week uh, for the first time ever, maybe all of this is happening at once for a reason, seemingly at once. Like when you when you zoom out of the timeline and you examine the history of humans and Earth and space and time, all of this stuff will be right on top of each other the when it's happening, right? Right on top of each other. All the world wars, disclosure, trickle, trickle, uh, alien abductions, all this kind of stuff. It's like, it's all stacked right on top of each other. It doesn't look like there's any separation in time when you zoom out and look at the big scale. It'll, you know, some of it might not even be mentioned, you know, in a timeline that doesn't have enough room to list all these things. So when you zoom out that far and scrunch it all together. So if we can have a unified paranormal theory, it has to do with having an interpretation or a philosopher's stone being able to translate all these languages into one another or back and forth to and fro. And we mostly, mostly can do that because do they all come from the same root language? Oh, shit, I definitely didn't think about this on the last one I recorded, so maybe I was supposed to not record it properly. Maybe they do all come from the same root language, and I do not have the answer to that question, nor should I have posed it out loud into a microphone while recording if I did not have the answer. But then again, I'm not I'm not over here acting like I'm Manly P. Hall. I don't have all these answers. We miss you, you magical Mr. Manly. Uh, and he was murdered. <laughs> what did they say it like? And he was a murdered. He was murdered. His wife said he was murdered. I believe her. So, um, I was bitten on the chest by something. Ah, why did you? You didn't need to know that, did you? Okay, I, I think I've settled down. I've calmed down. I was really on one earlier. I think I've settled it down a little bit. So the unified paranormal theory, I believe, will be just the the uh, the interpretation of the transmission from the universe, uh, being able to uh, understand that all of these different systems, belief and otherwise, and all these languages, as I'm calling them now, these different languages of the universe are all interpreting transmissions from the same thing. And... You know, although we have slightly different ways of describing them, whether it's through mathematical models, scientific experiments, or mystical beliefs, or fables, or stories, and otherwise, um, it's just all there. It's just all there, man. It's just all there. This idea I've got, by the way, and I've got road dates coming up. Um. I need to plug this before the end of the episode. Uh, May 28th, which is like two and a half weeks from now. Asheville, North Carolina at Asheville Beauty Academy. Uh, May 30th. So that's, I think, Memorial Day. Um, Motor Co. in Durham, North Carolina. Tickets are on sale now. Motor Co. Durham, North Carolina on the 30th. Asheville on the 28th. Wilmington, North Carolina June 1st. So I'm going Asheville on the 28th, Durham at Motorco on the 30th of May, and then on June 1st, I'll be in Wilmington, North Carolina. I love North Carolina, and I cannot wait to come back. Come to a show. Asheville, Durham, Wilmington. Come to all three if you're feeling it, right? If you want to come to all three, seriously, I mean, I know they're probably not that close to each other because Asheville is pretty east or west. Um, anyway, let me know. I could do a hookup, probably. I could probably do a hook, a ticket hookup. Uh, and then later in the summer, I'll be in July. I'll be at uh, in Louisville. I'll be in uh, Morgantown. I'll be in Mason City Limit, Illinois again. 
uh, Mason City, Illinois, I should say. I'll be in St. Louis on the 12th and 13th of August. I'll be in Chicago on August 10th. I'll be at Go Bananas Comedy Club the 18th through the 21st of August uh, with Dave Stone. Uh, I'm doing dates with Dave Stone. We're going to do a tour together. We're going to do Philadelphia. We're going to do Buffalo. We're going to do Cincinnati. We might, we're trying to line up something in Cleveland. We're trying to do kind of a Rust Belt kind of gig. So I'm all over the place. And this summer I am, I'm really fired up because I'm thinking about doing an on location multiple weeks, three, if not four weeks of recording the podcast somewhere, somewhere magical, somewhere where the Lemurians lie. I'm thinking about just kind of like relocating there for a few weeks and just seeing what happens and seeing if we can't get to the bottom of it, man. See if we can't get to the bottom of it, man. You're going to do it, man. You're going to get to the bottom of it, man. You're going to figure it all out. You're just not going to be able to explain it, but you'll know it. Wow, that doesn't sound great, Todd. So I'll understand everything, but I won't be able to convey that information to anyone. No, man, that's the thing about understanding. You just know. But you can't tell. It's no, it's not, it's not no and tell, man. Wow, does, does that prevent, you think, people from gaining understanding? If they, do you think some people only seek understanding so they can tell other people that they understand? Yeah, man, it's a thing, man. Oh, it, oh, oh. That was a quick answer, Todd. I wasn't expecting. Yeah, man, it's a thing. Sometimes people do. They want to know for the show and tell of it, man. Not, you know, instead of knowing. Okay, so that's just for the sake of making themselves feel smarter, look smarter around other people is the only reason they seek out truth and information and enlightenment. Well, man, if someone's enlightened, you're not going to really get hung up on that, man. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Okay, man. I got to go to work. Wait, what? You got a job, Todd? You got a job, Todd? That, wow. Plot twist, ladies and gentlemen. Todd's got a job. Todd's got a job. So, yeah, I'm going to be doing a series. Potentially. Potentially. You know, I said this idea an hour and a half ago. So, you know, that's how I am, though. I get an idea. I'm like, I got to do it right now. And I, I, you know. Lose all my money somehow. I got to go to Vegas right now. I, I had a dream that I saw the number nine. Okay. <laughs> you probably did see the number nine in a dream. That doesn't mean you got to go to Vegas. Jeez, you're ascribing meaning where it's not there. But anyway, I, so yeah, I'm feeling better. I hope you're doing okay. My voice is kind of going out on me now. This is the most I've talked in a week and a half. So um, I hope you're doing well. I hope you love yourself. I love you. You deserve it. Uh, check out ryansingercomedy.com backslash tour for tour dates. Motorco in Durham. And I haven't been there in years and I had a really hell of a good time last time I was there. Uh, Asheville is always a treat. And then Wilmington. I haven't been there in years either. So really looking forward to Asheville, Durham, Wilmington, North Carolina. Uh, all at the end of May, early June. And then more in July and August, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, I hope to see you at a show. And if I don't, which, but I really hope I do, I'll just see you at the watering hole on the astral plane.